I backed her. Lovely to see you again. Two years ago, you overcame your metaphobia and you're clearly thriving now. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing for the last couple of years. So my life changed a lot. Before the Thrive program, I was, I couldn't be alone with my kids when they were sick. If I got a phone call from the school or from the daycare, I, my heart would drop because my first thought was, somebody's sick, what am I going to do? Quickly call my husband. Even before I pick up the phone, I would start thinking, what went wrong? Um, now I get phone calls. It doesn't bother me. A couple of weeks ago, I got a phone call from the daycare my daughter's in that she threw up. And I didn't even call my husband. I went, I picked her up, brought her home, took care of her. Eventually, I sent my husband a message saying, you know, she threw up. She's okay. It'll be fine. We'll get through it. You know, it's not a big deal. And I can't even imagine two years ago that it would not have happened like that. I would right away call him panicking, come home from work, come take care of her. I can't do this. Um, I would also keep her away from the other kids so they don't get sick. And uh, different avoidance tactics, I guess which I didn't, doesn't even occur to me anymore. It doesn't, doesn't even come up. That's what he did. <laughs> so I find that I have to stick to the exercises every day. Even when you overcame it, you have to maintain a certain thinking style. So you have to keep your self-esteem up. Processing your positives every day is very important, especially if you're a consultant, because if you feel down and you're working with someone, they can feel it. You want to be confident. You want to feel good. And when you have high self-esteem and you're keeping the beliefs the way you've trained yourself to think, you're maintaining it. It's not going to go back. I had a period of time where I stopped. And, um, and when I stopped processing my positives, I found that I went back to the same place. I went, well, not as bad, I guess. But I started going downhill and then I caught myself. I said, if you want to maintain a certain thinking style and a certain, um, you know, lifestyle you have to you have to keep it up you can't just stop because you reached your goal you have to keep it in a certain place I was a better mother a better wife I just had more patience overall more I really got perspective and knew like I learned not to overreact in certain situations um, you just learn to feel good and not to let the little things in life get in your way don't get down on little things and just always see the good in things and be you just become more positive you learn how to think in a more positive way. That's fantastic news. So what, so what would you say then to the millions and millions of metaphobes out there around the world that are still struggling with it, that their the lives are still traumatised by it on a daily basis? What would you say to those people that, that are stuck in that rut and don't believe there's any help for them? Uh, I would say that everyone who's ever spoken to me who had a metaphobia, including myself, we all said the same thing and say the same thing. Um, everyone thinks they're so special and they're so different. Their emetophobia is different. Their, maybe it works for other people, it doesn't work for me. It's not true. It's very predictable. Emetophobia, we all had, have had the same thinking styles. We made the same mistakes in our, the way we think and how we process our thinking. It's very easy to overcome. I mean, it takes work and effort that you have to put in but it's it's worth it and there's no first of all what do you have to lose um but i i mean when i did it i was i did it because i was desperate and then after seeing it it also was the only thing that made sense to me and after seeing how it works i say try it you what do you have to lose and the difference you'll see is unbelievable not just with the metaphobia but in every aspect of your life